Well, to Belarus now, where an opposition activist has received a presidential pardon just weeks after he was sentenced to eight years in a penal colony. Roman Pratosevich was convicted for allegedly organizing unrest and plotting to seize power. Now, the charges related to his Telegram channel, which was used to mobilize protests against President Alexander Lukashenko back in 2020. Protasevich was arrested a year later in spectacular fashion, triggering a massive international incident. Now, he was flying with his girlfriend from Greece to Lithuania when Belarusian authorities ordered his flight to land in Minsk. The official reason given was a bomb threat, but no explosives were ever found. Western countries condemned the flight diversion, which was made under fighter jet escort. They called it, said it was tantamount to hijacking and they slapped sanctions on Belarus as a reaction. Well, after his arrest, Potosevich made several appearances on state television apologizing and professing his guilt. Critics claim that the statements were made under duress. Other opposition activists say that he betrayed the cause. Here's what he said earlier today, speaking after his very unexpected presidential pardon. First of all, I want to personally thank President Lukashenko, because this is his decision. Of course, I want to thank the country as a whole. And I really want to thank the people who believed in me, believed in my sincerity, and believe that people can improve and admit their mistakes. Well, for more context on this story now, I want to bring in Hannah Nubakova. She's a Belarusian journalist. Hannah, it's good to see you again. Um, a presidential pardon, a, a former activist who is obviously thankful and um, apologetic. Uh, how do you explain this? Obviously, he was he didn't want to do anything to get himself thrown back in prison, I guess, when he made that video today. Yeah, I mean, imagine you are uh, being kept as a hostage. Uh, the plane was first down to arrest you. Of course, he feels threatened. He feels scared. And he tried to save his life. So I think um, it's really wrong to judge him at this point. Mm -hmm. But I think the regime is uh, sending a message to, first of all, he, uh, the regime's opponents, so those people who sort of uh, are against, of course, Lukashenko, against the regime, uh, to show that, well, if you admit mistakes, that's something that also Roman said, that I think is crucial, if you admit mistakes, then you can be pardoned. That's also a signal to people who are inside the country, who are undecided, who don't know who to support the democratic forces or the regime, that uh, Lukashenko has mercy that he is able to show mercy. That's also a signal to people inside the system, because if Roman would really spend these eight years in prison, then of course nobody inside the system would be motivated to collaborate with the regime anymore. Mm. And I think that's also a signal to the international community that, well, Lukashenko is capable of having dialogue, of you know, releasing opponents to show mercy to Roman Pratasevich and others. So you're saying then that possibly Lukashenko is using Roman here as an example. He's making an example out of him, a positive example of, of what can happen, the mercy that can happen if you do as we say. Well, that's only one example. I think Roman uh, has a very unique case because he uh, was, you know, the whole plane was was first down. And um, there is no such example uh, among others, right? Uh, nobody really uh, uh, had this such a significant case. So, of course, uh, the regime cannot boast of any other people showing, uh, you know, so much sort of um, that they would collaborate with the regime, that they would, uh, so, would feel so Sorry that they would admit mistakes and so on. So Roman is being used by the regime to show to the world that, uh, well, there is one person at least that uh, feels sorry for what uh, they did. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good point. You know, last week you and I um, spoke, there were rumors about Lukashenko's health. I mean, he had missed several key public events and you and I discussed that even um, the opposition political opposition was preparing for a possible change at the top in, in some form. 
Um, do you think that those questions um, that were so public last week about Lukashenko's authority, about him being a, a lapdog of Vladimir Putin, do you think they had anything to do with this presidential pardon? Yeah, I think it's all very much connected. You know, Lukashenko has this mentality that he wants people to feel sorry, that he wants people to come to him um, on his on their knees, you know, to ask uh, for a pardon. He has always done this, even before, with political opponents, with political prisoners before. And even now, we have more than 1,500 political prisoners in the country, right? Roman Protasevich is just one of many of those who are in jail and this pardon means nothing uh, really for, you know, for the scale of state terror and brutal repression that exists in Belarus. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is a kind of something that Lukashenko wants to show that he's in control because there is not much to show else, right? Because yeah. he lost uh, sovereignty in many other spheres, like in military sphere, in foreign affairs, in information sphere, and so on, in the economy especially, right? Mm -hmm. And he's traveling to Moscow in just a few days. Mm -hmm. So I think this is, uh, again, something that helps Lukashenko to feel in control. Well, well, has there been, I mean, do you, can you confirm, has there been any reaction from opposition circles? And I'm thinking, of course, specifically of, Svetlana Tihanovskaya. Uh, to to Roman Protasevich uh, trial, right. yes, I think there is a lot of. Um, well, first of all, Roman was part of. Uh, he is a blogger. He is a prominent journalist. He was very well known, right? So of course everybody is talking about this. Um, I think his um, information about political opponents uh, that he leaked to, to the regime because he had to collaborate with them, um, of course upset many. Um, and there is uh, some sort of negative reactions to this. And of course uh, his girlfriend, his former girlfriend is in jail. Um, and I think many people are asking what is happening with her. Uh, so I think this is very, very important. Uh, another issue is that exactly today, there is uh, a trial that has been started against uh, another political opponent, Eduard Babareka, who is the son of very prominent political rival, Viktor Babarika, who was one of the most prominent uh, opponents of Lukashenko in 2020. And exactly today, the regime wanted to reveal information about Roman Protasevich. So it's very much coincided. And I think everybody put uh, paid a lot of attention to that, to this coincident, uh, and that the regime wanted to sort of hide the issue of one political prisoner being on trial mm -hmm. uh, by revealing this information about Roman, Roman Protasevich. Yeah, yeah, using one man to smoke screen another. That's a very astute observation. Journalist Hannah Lubakova, we appreciate your reporting tonight and giving us excellent context here. Thank you.